Yo, what's going on? What is going on? Back inside. I am live. Got six nice bluegills. I'm going to fry them up. Got to clean them and fillet them first. Wait for some folks to get in here. I got rained on, of course. I'm all wet. <laughs> see yo matt's fishing mission what's going on i'm back in missouri i was uh fishing in pennsylvania all weekend and then drove through a bunch of states back here in missouri went out fishing today i caught a couple bass um it was slow had a bunch of rain recently so i switched to pan fishing and stuff with uh worms and i ended up with i don't know i think i caught 26 fish or something like that um I wish I had known I was going to fry some up. I would have kept more because I caught plenty of keepers. It wasn't until close to the end that I had gut hooked a bluegill and decided, well, I'm going to keep him and cook him up. And then I decided, well, if I have a bluegill and I'm keeping him and frying him up, I may as well keep a couple more because there's no point in just cutting up one and frying him up. That'd just be an appetizer. So I'll show you guys. I got six of them here. None of them are monsters. Six bluegills right there. So what we're going to be doing in this stream, I'm literally going to be cleaning those six and filleting them. Not like a, not like a whole meal or anything, just a little small meal. Um, I'll be cleaning those and filleting them. I'm going to pan fry them. I got the whole setup over there to pan fry them. And I'll take you guys along for the journey. And then you guys can hang out with me after they're pan fried. And I'll probably go in the other room and I or it right in here, whatever. And I'll eat them and chat while uh, while I'm eating them. Probably just be a short little live. And then after that, I don't know, I'll probably end the thing and then hang out with my family while I'm here. Uh, my mom left. She went somewhere. It is I'm in Central Time, so it's 2.30. And I know this afternoon, I think my sister and her husband and some people are coming over. So before then, I definitely want to take a nice shower because I just got poured on out there. <laughs> At the end of my last live. I ended it because it was raining, then the rain started coming down really hard, and of course I had, to, I had to clean everything up. So I got poured on. We got nine awesome people in here, four thumbs up. So we got Matt's Fish and Mission. We got Richard from Some Old Man Outdoors. We've got Ted from Off the Hook Outdoors. He said, what is this eating again? Hey man, I've had almost no food today, so. <laughs> Evan TV, what's going on? Long time no see. Still mad you didn't pull through, Cincy. Yeah, I know. My girlfriend's back at work today, or else I would have... Uh, I would have finessed a couple other collabs while I was out there. If I wasn't with her or if she didn't have work, I would have got. And I tried to get with someone in, in a, kind of an hour and a half or so outside of Indianapolis. But they ended up not feeling well. So I uh, couldn't do that. And then I just wish that I had more time. I would have got together with more people. Because I drove through Ohio, uh, Indiana, Illinois, obviously Pennsylvania, and uh, part of Missouri. And there's so many people in between. Kansas City and Edinburgh, Pennsylvania that I could have stopped and hung out with. But we're going to try to make it happen at some point with as many people as I can. Once I graduate, I'm going to try to collab with a ton of people. And I may even try to do some more collabs this summer. Who knows? I got some plans, at least with some of the Missouri people around here. We got 922, nine, I don't know what I just said, but 922 Crappie Barbecue. Carpenter Down Under said, what's for breakfast? We're having some fried crappie. So anyone who didn't see, I've got cords that I'm kind of avoiding right here. Or bluegill. Not, I said crappie, didn't I? Guys, apparently I didn't get enough sleep last night. I woke up at like four or something. But right there, we've got uh, six bluegills. I probably caught a good 10 or 12 keeper bluegills today at least. I caught like 20, 24 bluegills and two bass today. Um... But I didn't start keeping them until close to the end because one swallowed the hook. And if I had known that I was going to do that, I would have kept some more of the keepers. So that's on me. I wasn't planning on keeping any until I started keeping them. So Kelly, hey, I can't stay. Well, you came in and that's what matters. I appreciate you coming in. Indiana, Chris, what's going on? I got to get back with you um, about that message you sent to me. Just got back in town last night, so I haven't had a chance to do a whole lot. So hopefully tomorrow I can get with some people. Chris, you did another good lake report again today. You're good at that. And Ted's sharing links. Appreciate you off the hook. 
Cool. So eight awesome people in here. Six thumbs up. Smack, smack that thumbs up if you have it. Not having a good time talking today. I don't know what the deal is. I haven't got good sleep all weekend. Me and Ted just fish like crazy. And then um, I don't sleep well in hotels away from home and stuff like that with people yelling in all the other rooms and stuff. And then last night I probably slept from 11.30 or 12 to like 4 something. So I probably got maybe five hours of sleep at the most. <laughs> So we're going to fillet some fish here. Let me try to get this set up away where you guys can see my cutting board and see what I'm doing. That's the goal. So I'm going to do some stuff with this tripod here. Tripod's too big for this dang counter though. <laughs> Alright, we're going to turn the camera this way. Ignore my big old hand right in the frame. Look at that. That might work. That might work. Kind of a sickening view, I think. <laughs> if I can make you guys sick, but I'll try to read the chat and fillet them at the same time without getting guts on my phone. That's the goal. So we got six of these bluegills. None are very big. I'm worried that I'm not going to get very much meat at all from these guys, but um, you guys will see this is a little sample of uh, this this uh, catch, cook, and clean. I caught them in the last live stream. If you guys didn't see the catch part of this whole thing, but we're going to fillet these guys up, and this will just be a little little snack. And so imagine doing this with like you know, 20 big size bluegills, you get, you get quite a bit of food. So I've got the Rapala electric fillet knife there. I messed around with cheap fillet knives, little $15 ones from Walmart for too long. And they, they last a couple weeks and they break down. And so got one of these Rapala ones and it's lasted, I don't know, almost a year. So no complaints there. So I just do diagonal right here behind the, the gill spot behind the neck. Try to cut as much as I can without going through the spine. And then I turn the blade sideways and I kind of press down like that to where I'm running along the spine instead of going through it. So hopefully I don't mess any up too bad. And I try to get close to the edge so I can turn my hand without it hitting the counter or anything like that. So I go sideways. And I just apply a little bit of pressure. And I don't go all the way through the tail. I stop like a centimeter before I get to the tail right there. So it's still attached. Then I flip it over and go as close as I can to the skin here. I'm, I'm, go I'm going completely skinless, not having to scale them or anything. And then you just cut like that. Close to the skin as you can. And so these little guys don't give you very big fillets. And I'm still going to have to take those ribs out. But I like to do one step at a time. So for now, I'm just going to cut two fillets from each fish like that and throw them in there and then I can clean them and cut the ribs out later. So every one of these fish will give me two fillets like that so that's 12 little tiny fillets and then we'll pan fry them up and it'll be awesome. So here's the other one. Same way. Cut it diagonally like that. Turn the blade. Stay as close to the spine without going through as possible. Flip it. Press down against the skin. See, I'm, I'm kind of bending the blade like this a little bit, and I've got my hand on the outside of the counter, so there's no nothing obstructing my hand. And I do a little sawing motion, you see? If your blade's super sharp, you shouldn't have to do that, but I like to do that little sawing motion. So, didn't get as good of a job there. You see how I missed that little spot? There's just a tiny bit of meat right there that I didn't get. Now, if you do that with a big fish, you can go and cut that meat and cook that too, but that would give me a scrap about that big, and so I'm not messing with it. Sometimes if I really don't want to waste the fish, I put the guts in a bucket here and I'll take those out to the lake and throw those out there. Those will be food for catfish and turtles and stuff like that. But yeah, again, I'll cut these ribs later and clean the fillets before I'm going to uh, bread them and fry them up. But sometimes if I don't want to waste anything, those little tiny things, I will cut those tiny scraps and I'll cook those up and feed them to the dogs or something. No seasoning or anything. Ted said audio good, video good. Appreciate it. <laughs> Let's see, Randy, you and Ted are taking good care of us. Appreciate you guys sharing those links. Yeah, Randy just became a mod on my channel just because he's he's newer um, to the community, at least as far as I know him. I don't know how long he's been around, but me and Randy weren't introduced too long ago. And uh, Ted on his phone showed Randy how to how to do uh, you know share links as a moderator. After I made him a mod on my channel, this was Saturday night, I think. Friday, Saturday night, one of the two. I think Friday night. But uh, yeah, and Randy's already good at sharing links, so it's it's going pretty going pretty well. I appreciate you, Randy. And Ted, you know I appreciate you, man. So here's a little bigger one. Same thing. I cut it diagonally. The reason why I do that 
is you want to get as much of the shoulder meat up here as possible. And if you try to cut it just straight down, like they're going to run into that hard gill plate and you're just going to jack it all up. So then you try to, and these fins get in the way sometimes too, these little uh, dorsal fins down here, or ventral fins, I mean. So I go down, I turn sideways, I'm trying to cut as close to the ribs as I can without going through. If you go through, you're going to have a disaster that you're going to have to deal with. And so you can tell you don't see much meat that's directly the bones right there. So you pretty much got it all. Same thing. Go as close to the bottom, as close to the bottom as I can. Try not to miss any meat. I did the best I could there. Little fillet. That got ripped off, but see how there's not really any meat that I left on there? So I don't know. That bluegill is just weird shaped or something. So there's another one. Again, we'll clean that blood off and we'll cut the the ribs out and do all that stuff later. So this is number two, we got four more to go. So when I'm not explaining it, I can do them fairly quick, quickly. And it goes a lot better with bigger bluegills. With these small ones, I go slow. Because if you miss any meat on these small ones, you basically got nothing left, you know? So I usually don't like to keep ones this size. These are, a lot of these are just below the size I normally keep. Um, but it's weird with bluegills because I don't like keeping the monsters either, especially if it's a lake I fish a lot because those are the ones with the good genes. You know, if I catch a one pounder, I really don't want to keep it unless it gets gut hooked and it's not going to make it or something like that. So, almost like a self imposed uh, slot size on the bluegills where I like them a little bigger than that, but I don't like the big monsters. So, right around a half pound is perfect, maybe a little bit more. So, you're just following, I'm just following along the backbone. Um, you're, you're hitting it, whether you're going to do it with a fillet knife or an electric fillet knife like this, you know, a manual one or whatever, you can kind of feel the vibration as you're hitting those, those bones along the spine, but you don't want to put too much pressure and you don't want to turn it like this because you'll go straight through it and you go straight through it. Then you're hacking up the other side. Um, and you're getting bone that you don't want in there and stuff like that. So we got four more. This one's a little smaller again. Let's see. Everyone in here is awesome. I wanted to thank everyone for going on our live streams and joining us on our trip this past weekend. I was shown by the best, Ted. That's awesome. I'm glad you guys enjoyed it. Yeah, I definitely enjoyed it. So I'm sure you guys all know what we're talking about. You guys were probably all there, but me and Off the Hook, we went live on his channel, on my channel. Uh, we got together. I, I, Me and the Queen, me and Molly, we came down to PA, or came up to PA, I should say, and we fished with him for smallmouth, panfish, bowfin, musky, a little bit of everything. Um, and we caught a bunch of nice fish. We caught some decent largemouth. We caught some really nice smallmouth. Ton of panfish, including some new species for both of us. We didn't get on bowfin or musky, but we both got a close encounter with a bowfin where we both got one to follow our lures all the way up to the boat. They were probably about every bit of like 38, 40 inches. So they weren't monster muskies, but they were nice ones. Um, Molly thinks she saw a bowfin. I don't know if she did or not, but we were fishing for bowfin. She saw something come up and smack the surface. And Ted said that's what the bowfin usually do. Like, that's how you know you got a good one right there. I'll try to put this down right here. I don't know how well you guys can see, but that is... See how you could just see right through it? There's no meat left on that. That's just, just straight bone. It looks like in those old cartoons, um, the little... The little fish bones they would feed to cats and stuff like that. So Now what I did right there that I shouldn't have done, I shouldn't have cut through the skin and detached it. Because it's nice to have something to hold on to to pull against while you're cutting. But luckily I can just get my fingernail on there and pull against the bit of skin that's remaining. So there's another good one. I got all the meat I possibly could. That's like a perfect fillet, especially for these little guys. You want to get as much meat as you can. So there's another one we got that's half of them we got three left so we should have six fillets there and six more to go oh, none of these are very big none of these bluegills they're all probably just under what i would consider keeper size or that that borderline of just barely keeper size so there's another one there my chat's not keeping up for some reason what up, Elgato Azul? Appreciate you coming in. Anyone else come in? No, I think I said hi to everyone. We got 10 people in here and nine thumbs up. Make sure to smack that thumbs up. 
feel free to share it out if you want. It's not going to be a super long live. Basically, um, of all the nice Keeper Bluegills I kept earlier, unfortunately I released a lot of the bigger ones. I didn't know I was going to be keeping any until I had one swallow the hook halfway through fishing earlier. And so after that, I decided I wanted to keep a few more, and I wanted at least five. So I ended up keeping five more after the one that swallowed the hook. So I got six total, and I'm just cutting these little boneless, skinless, scaleless fillets, doing it the easy, quick way from these six bluegills that I kept. That one messed up. See, I cut all the way through the head, and now it's going to be really hard. I knew I would mess one up on this thing. It's going to be really hard to get back where I need to with this. So I'm going to probably lose... A bit of meat from this one. This 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 fillet here might be might be a bust. Cause I just I accidentally cut through the entire head, so now there's nothing to pull against and try to stay on top of those ribs. So that's kind of uh, that's kind of going to screw me over there. Give me a second. Get some of this nasty stuff out of here. All right, so it's not going to be easy. I I have some options here, basically. I could start at the tail and try to go through, and I may do that. Um, it's going to be hard to finish it, or I can try to cut on top of this thing, and I think I'm actually going to do that to where I'm still going to try to get on top of the ribs, but it's, a li it's, it's difficult here without the head and everything else attached, and so that's not what I was trying to do. I did, I did good on the first, uh, first three, and then this fourth one, I kind of jacked up. I'm having a hard time getting on top of the ribs where I want to be. So never do what I'm doing here, where you're cutting towards your fingers. That's just me being dumb. Yeah, this one I jacked up. This fillet is going to be an absolute mess. Yeah, I don't think I got any meat out of that one. So, that's how much you met. There's like nothing on there. So that's how, how bad it is. It's a shame I did this on the live stream. But that's how bad it is when you when you don't do it right. You cut through the head or you cut through the spine or something. So I can try to get whatever meat's left here. If the other piece I got is worth it, then this piece is worth it too. But yeah, just just barely anything right there. So between those two pieces, I did all right for for messing up. But yeah, that was that was kind of a disaster. I'll usually clean. You know, let's say if I'm cleaning 30 fish, that normally happens with like three of them, like about about 10% or less. So I'm usually pretty good at getting it. With the, like I said, with the bigger fish, it's easier. With the smaller ones, it's easier to screw up and cut through the head or something. Seven to eight inches are keeper size. I let the bigger ones go. Yeah, these ones are probably here. I can get, let's see if I have a, I would guess these are around six, maybe the biggest one, seven. Yeah, this one is actually seven and a half right there so that's seven and a half so that is those are about the size chris keeps i don't really keep i don't know like to keep them just just a little bigger than this i like to keep them around eight inches or so but they get closer to like nine and a half ten inches yeah those are the big ones that i usually let go not that they're not delicious i love eating those guys but i like to keep the good genetics in there and if, if a fish gets up if a bluegill gets up to nine ten inches they're usually pretty chunky by that size too those are the ones you want reproducing and making more big bluegills. So especially if it's a place you fish all the time. And you want to keep big bluegills in there. I wouldn't keep the giant ones. But I know some people just try to keep, catch the biggest ones they can and keep them. And that's that's fine. You know. You do you. As long as you're not breaking any walls or anything. Okay. There we go. So there, that one I cut the tail off on accident. It's just, it's getting, I don't know. It's they're a little small, but I'm not, I'm not doing my best right now for some reason. But with the few mistakes I've made, I try to salvage the best because I want to get all the meat I can, and I feel bad wasting meat on a fish that I killed just for meat, right? Even if they swallowed the hook and I wasn't trying to keep them for meat. It's like, if I'm going to keep them, I may as well try to get all the meat. So there's one more. For anyone who just stopped in, I'll explain again exactly what I'm doing. If anybody is either not familiar with flaying bluegills or not familiar with doing it this way. Um, there's a few different ways to do it. 
Okay, there's a few different ways to do it. You can scale them, and you can fillet them with the skin on. And I've done that before. It's the same method. You just scale them first. Um, and that way, you can just literally cut it completely off through the tail. You don't have to leave the. You don't have to cut the skin off. Um, you get more flavor that way. You can also just scale them and uh, fry them up whole. Or I, I usually scale them, cut the heads off, and fry them up whole if I'm doing that way. That's the most flavor you're gonna get. But I've done that with so many bluegills, I get tired of beating around the bones. So what I'm doing is I'm cutting diagonally right here. You see this black gill spot? Basically moving it out of the way and cutting right behind the gill plate there. So you want to move that pectoral fin out of the way. But I just cut diagonally right there, and you stop before you cut through the... Uh, see, that's that's the rib I just hit. You don't want to cut through or the, uh, the spine. I don't want to cut through the spine. And then I'm going to turn it sideways and cut along the backbone without going through. So you don't want to angle it down so you cut through. You don't want to put too much pressure, but just a little pressure down. And that'll that'll... That'll get as much meat as you can. So I turn it sideways, and I just cut. And so back back when I first started fishing, I didn't have these fancy electric fillet knives. So I would just do that same thing, but I'm doing, again, the tail came off. That's not what I'm trying to do. But I would do it with just a normal fillet knife, you know, a little $9 fillet knife from Walmart, not an electric one. And it'd be a lot more like of a sawing motion. But you want to keep those guys really sharp, because if they get dull, you're going to hack up your fillets. So there's decent fillet right there. We'll get one more from this guy. Let's see if I'm missing anything in the chat. Um, hey, King and all. What up, Steve? Sat down for lunch and saw you live. Yes, I did a five-hour live stream catching bluegills and stuff earlier. I think I caught 24 or 25 bluegills and a bass. And then I caught another bass right before the live stream. So biggest fish of the day was a pound and a quarter. Large mouth. I don't know where I need to be for you to see me. Uh, was a pound and a quarter largemouth, um, bunch of bluegills, and then I actually caught a turtle, a big old uh, red-eared slider. And I was not trying to catch a turtle. And I did not. I don't like catching turtles, but I got them off the hook and got them back pretty quick. So I did the best I could. Saw some big fish, but didn't hook up with any big fish. It's good. I don't do much. I just watch. Indiana, my PB gill is ten and three quarters inches. Yes, yeah, some states are into the the. Uh, measuring thing for certain fish in missouri it's almost all weighing we don't we don't do a whole lot of measuring fish and i could be wrong maybe randy's like oh i measure all my fish i don't know this i got a dog over here screaming at me stop doing that no somewhere around here i got a spray bottle to spray her if she's screaming um she's deaf so if, if i say no she can't hear me but uh, we, we, we weigh ours, so my biggest bluegill is probably just under a pound, but I've caught hybrids, and I've caught red ears that are just over a pound, and that's uh, Master Angler Award in Missouri is, is one pound, so I could have Master Angler Award if I wanted, but I hadn't applied for it. I've got a Master Angler Award for grass carp, and Molly has one for smallmouth bass, so again, cut it diagonally here, turn the blade... And cut along the backbone without going through. I don't know how well you can hear me while this loud thing is going. Such the dog barking in the background. Again, I accidentally cut the tail off. I usually don't do that. I don't know what the deal is today. But I'm normally keeping fish that are a little bigger than this guy here. So I try to keep this close to the edge here. That's a pro tip. If you keep the, the fillet close to the edge, it gives you more room to be able to press down like this to get the blade as flat as possible. And you'll get more meat that way. That way, you don't have any meat left to the left on the skin that you aren't uh, you aren't getting for yourself. And I just do slight little sawing motions. It just helps me get through it and uh, get as much meat as possible. So I've got twelve fillets here from six little bluegills. In my opinion, these guys are probably just under the size I would ideally keep. Probably about. Uh, an inch shorter than the ones I would normally keep. But now I've got to clean all this. I'll probably clean that after the... Oh, gosh. Sorry, I'm making a mess over here. I'll probably clean all that after the live stream. You guys don't really want to see me sit here and clean stuff. Um, so I can do that once I end the stream. But, let's see. I'm going to turn you guys to me now. If you give me a second, and I'll get caught up in the chat. Oh, I like this tripod because you can do so much with it, but there's always the moving around that I think people don't really want to get dizzy. 
So here I am. I'll move it back a little bit so it's not so close. So I've got these 12 fillets, not monster ones or anything like that. Oh, I forgot an important step. I forgot an important step. Wow. I was just going to clean them, but I want to do something else before I clean them. I should not have moved that. Hold on, guys. Wow. You can tell there's something something up with me today. I'm just not thinking straight. Okay. Let's get this tripod is being annoying. Okay. So here we go back here. I can somewhat clean it a little bit with a paper towel for now, but this thing's gonna get scrubbed really good afterwards. It's good to have a cutting board that's just for just for cutting raw fish, because otherwise if you use one that you're gonna use for, you know, chopping vegetables and everything like that as well, um, you're gonna have to clean it really good because you got raw fish on there. You don't wanna get parasites or anything on your other food or any type of bacteria. So this is the step that, I, I never liked this step. I mean, it's not that it's hard, it's that you go from these good looking fillets that you have here, but then you cut these ribs off and you're, you're left with like no fish. And you're like, oh, well that, that stinks. But basically what you're really doing is you're just doing a quick triangle. You cut that off and that off. And you can try to get under it and cut under it, but with these little guys, you ain't gonna do much anyway. So I just kind of cut right around the ribs I'll clean what's left, just rinse it off real good, and we're going to bread it and fry it, and it'll just be a little snack. It's not going to be a whole meal or anything like that. And that's why I like to keep a little bit bigger bluegills, so that way if you're killing a fish, you're at least getting a little more meat from it. And I'm not opposed to, to cutting up giant bluegills or anything like that. I just normally put them back because I want to keep them in the waterways. But if you're fishing somewhere that's just full of monster bluegills, let's say you're fishing somewhere like... Lake Havasu, I think it is, in Arizona. You're fishing some of these places in Georgia and Florida that have monster bluegills. I wouldn't be opposed to keeping a couple big ones. Because the worst thing is keeping ones that are too small, and you kill a fish and you get pretty much no meat from it. So, see how I'm doing this? Kind of just cutting right along these ribs here. And down the bottom of them. And you try to cut as close. You don't want to leave any ribs in there because then you've got bones in your mouth. But yeah, just kind of like that little shape right there. And if they were bigger, they'd look better and I'd have more meat from each one. But they're pretty small little guys here. I wasn't going to keep any bluegills until one swallowed a hook. I decided I better keep them. And after keeping him, I decided, hey, I don't want to do all this work and get everything dirty and cut just one fish up. So I decided I was going to keep at least five. And so I ended up with six but I could have easily had 10 to 15 keeper size bluegills to, to fillet. So let me get another paper towel here for my hands before I touch my phone again. We got seven people in the house, 12 thumbs up. Appreciate you. Dirt bike guy, what's going on? Um, Let's see. Elgato just hooked up dirt bike guy. There you go, buddy. Thank you, guys. You don't cut out the rib cage, <laughs> Steve. I was going to do it. I'm a little bit, uh, I don't know, a little bamboozled today, I guess. I don't know. They will still be golden crispies, exactly. Yeah, we keep the big ones and throw the little ones back to grow. We have long growing season, so fish grow fast here. Going to be like potato chips. Yeah, just little just little guys. So I know, uh, I think Steve, some of you other guys have done some saltwater fishing. And you, if you guys are keeping fish from salt, you probably get much bigger fish than this most of the time. So... This is just going to be like a little snack to you guys. I'll be right back. I hear some dogs getting into some stuff. So I'm going to figure out what they're getting into. Hey, what are you doing? Apparently, my dog's got a new toy that uh, makes noise. It's got like something inside it. It's paper or something. So this one might be a bust here. I don't think these little scraps, and I got the other side of it. This is the one that I messed up. This is the one that, and I hate messing it up because you don't have much meat, but literally all I get, there's a little bit more there, but I don't think it's worth, like these little bits of meat right here, that's not really worth doing anything with right there. And so when I get the oil going and I'm pan frying these, I might throw these in there without breading them, and I can throw those to the dogs so they can get a couple pieces of fresh fish. They need clean food after the, the incident that they've been through. 
So yeah, instead of getting a whole one like that, I just got this. And it was one of the smaller bluegills, but yeah, I did. I jacked it up and I missed out on that little bit of meat just from one side. And it was from it was from cutting the head off and it became really hard to do what I was trying to do. So this one I'm proud of right here. This one was a beautiful looking filet. I got as much meat as physically possible from this guy. That'll make a nice one right there. That'll redeem me from whatever the heck I did with that other guy. Okay. So yeah, I don't know. I, I didn't get good sleep last night, and I haven't got great sleep since, you know, a week. A week now. And so I think it's finally catching up to me, because I keep saying some dumb stuff, and I <laughs> almost forgot to cut the rib meat out. Um, my old man never filleted, just scaled them, cut the heads off, and gutted them pan fry whole. Then you have to pick out the bones. Yeah, they're delicious that way. I think I think this is the easiest way. If you want a little more flavor, I would scale them. Do Definitely scale them outside because fish scales get literally everywhere. But I would scale them with a spoon or a knife. Just run it down the opposite way of the grain, like against the grain that the scales are going until the fish's skin is smooth and you've got all the scales off. And you do the same thing, but you don't cut the skin off. You just leave the skin because there's no scales. So leaving the skin on, I think, gives you more flavor. It's like when you pluck a bird because you want to leave that skin on um, because that area where the meat hits the skin has a whole lot of flavor. So you get more flavor that way, but I think it takes more work and it's messier. Now, another way to do it that is the least messy, still takes more work, but the most flavor is what Arkansas is talking about. And I, that's the first time I ever fried bluegill. That's how I did it, and I've done it plenty of times, and I, I'll still do it. But you see, there's scales everywhere in here, and I didn't even scale them. This is just from buzzing them with that electric fillet knife. I'm trying to keep scales from getting everywhere because my mom will get upset. But but you can cut their heads off. Well, I would scale them first so you have the mouth to hold. I'd scale them, then I'd cut the heads off, and then just fry them whole like that. And you can also slit the belly open, and you can pull out the guts if you don't want the guts in there. But you fry them whole like that with no with no scale on with the skin. And so where the meat hits the bones and where the meat hits the the skin, that's where a lot of the flavor is. You get the most flavor that way, but you got to pick them off the bone. And I don't mind it, but I've done it with so many fish that I just don't feel like it. If I have one or two big bluegills, I might do that, or I might scale them and leave the skin on. But if I'm if I if I go and catch a limited crappie, which is thirty in most lakes in Missouri, or if I'm fishing a private lake and I'm keeping a ton of crappie or bluegill or something. I'm going to want to just do them really fast, and I'll do it this method right here. So that's what I'm left with right there. I'm going to rinse them, and I'm going to put them in a clean bowl, and then we'll take you guys over there, and we'll pan fry them. So let me unplug my phone real quick here from the... I don't think we're going to need power for right now. Let me straighten this up. Got two people in here, 13 thumbs up. What's going on, Bullets and Barbecue? Wow, we, I thought we had like nine people and now we're down to two. What did I do? Living for Jesus, sat down a couple minutes from gardening and look who I found. Hey y'all, how's it going? So I'm actually gonna put I'm gonna put some oil in the pan and get the heat turned on. Your dog is helping out. Yeah, she's hungry. She's deaf. She's really sweet. Um but she will just sit there, and every time you have food or something she thinks is food in your hand, she will just bark at you and follow you around. And you can't say, no, stop, because she's deaf. She can't hear you. But I'm going to turn the heat up to make sure I turn the right one on, because sometimes I turn the wrong one on, and I screw that up. But I'm going to turn it up to just above medium. I can turn it down later. But we're just pan frying. We're not deep frying or anything like that. So that's pl probably plenty of oil there for the bottom of that. And I'll leave the oil here in case I need more. But we've got, as you can see, the heat's on. Got it on medium high, you know, medium to medium high. Um, and we'll come back and mess with that later. So what I'm doing right now is I'm going to take these guys right here. Just a couple little bluegills. We had six of them, so we got 12 fillets. And I'm going to rinse them off in the sink and get them right in there. And then we are going to come to this station over here. And I'm going to, I'm going to whisk this egg up just with a fork. I'm going to dip them in the egg. I'm going to dredge them in the uh, fish fry. I'm just using something cheap I grabbed from Walmart. This Louisiana seasoned crispy fish fry. That stuff's pretty good. So I'll put them in there. I mean, you can comment and let me know what your favorite fish breading is. Mine is Canadian Fisherman's. But you can't go wrong with just some flour and some, some Old Bay or some uh, Tony's. 
you can't go wrong with cornmeal. Uh, you know, so a lot of people make their own, but there's a ton of good ones out there. And then we'll go ahead and pan fry them. I got a plate ready with a paper towel so that it so soaks some of that grease out of it so it's not so greasy. And then we'll sit down and eat, and I'll chat to you guys while I'm eating. So, thanks for coming in, living for Jesus. Appreciate you. Good luck in this YouTube starter kit thing. Okay. So, I guess there's no reason to keep it aimed at that. I'll just aim it at me while I'm... While I'm washing them. This is why I need a cameraman or a camerawoman. <laughs> Frying Magic. My favorite. Never heard of it. Beer batter and pinkos. Those are good. I've got panko breading right here with me. Um, I don't think it's worth getting two different breadings out if I'm just going to be doing a couple little tiny potato chips like you called them. So let's turn it this way. Oh. <laughs> There's this cheap stuff from, like, uh, we got stores around here called Price Chopper. I don't know if they have them in your guys' area. But at Price Chopper, <laughs> she got scared because I moved real quick. Um, they, they used to sell this stuff. They'd have them at Walmarts, too. And they were called McCormick's. It's the cheap brand. They've got McCormick's Fish Fry, McCormick's Beer Brat, beer, be, wow, Beer Batter, and then some other ones. I have not been able to find the McCormick's Beer Batter in a while. That was one of my favorite ones. I don't know what they did with it. I don't know what happened. But I can't find it anymore. And that was my go-to cheap stuff. So, again, my favorite one is Canadian Fisherman's Breading, but you can't buy it in America. You can only buy it in, in uh, Canada. And so Johnny Venegas from I Caught a Fish in Canada, he used to send me that stuff. He sent it to me completely free. And so I told him, I was like, man, I don't need it free anymore. I just want you to be my breading dealer. <laughs> I was like, I'll send you money. I'll pay for the shipping and for the breading. You just send me the breading because it beats any any other breading I've ever had. It's It's delicious. I've breaded morel mushrooms in it. I've breaded all types of fish in it. I'm sure I've done other meats besides just fish. It's just absolutely delicious. But I sent him those messages and he never got back with me about it. So I've got one last thing of Canadian Fisherman's at my apartment and it's open. I've already used it for some stuff. And I'm just savoring the rest of it. So all I'm doing right now is just rinsing off these little fillets and putting them in a clean bowl. And then we'll start the cooking process. And hopefully the the oil will be hot. That's what you got to remember to turn the oil on. Give yourself some time for it to get hot before you're actually going to fry them because that can take a while. Now pan frying, that oil heats up pretty quick. It's just a real thin layer of oil on the pan. But if you're going to deep fry them and you're trying to get that oil to 350 or 375 or whatever you want to cook them at and it's, it's a big vat of oil, you're going to want to start that 20 minutes before you're ready to do it. 15, 20 minutes before you're ready. So I'll start that before I even start cutting the fish up. Unless I have 50 fish that I'm filleting, then maybe when I have 10 fish left or 15 fish left, then I'll go over and I'll get that started. So you just keep that in mind, especially if you're hungry um, or you're, you're, you're having like a fish fry dinner and you've got guests over and they're waiting to eat some delicious fish and you don't want to keep them waiting too long, just think about that with the oil. So I'm just washing these getting anything and everything that I don't want on there off of them. I've got one more to go. And I've got some little scraps here from one filet that I messed up because so I just cut the thing a little bit wrong. And so those little scraps I'm probably not going to bread. Um, as long as, If they stick to another filet, then yeah, they'll get breaded and fried. But if I can keep them separate, I'll actually pan fry those without any breading and I'll feed them to the, to the dogs. Or at least this one dog that's right here. Fresh fish is good for dogs. Uh, a lot of people do it raw. I clean it because I just don't want them to get any parasites or anything. Okay, so take you guys over here. See where I can put this. For now, I'm going to put it right. I'm going to put the tripod right here. That oil is getting hot, so it should be ready when it's ready. Um... I guess the best thing to do would be to find a place to put it where you can see this entire process. Okay. All right. Let's try something here. There's a lot of crap in the way, which is kind of frustrating. This counter is not big enough for my tripod. Hold on, we'll get some we'll get something figured out. I don't know what, but we'll get something figured out. This counter is really, really not big enough for what I'm trying to do. All right, if I turn it this way, 10 people in the house, what's going on? Shore lunch, I've heard a lot of people say that. 
Sunfish King, I'm off to stalk some carp. Good luck, buddy. Drake's mix is the best ear batter style. Frying fish. Oh yeah. What up, little Dusty? Yeah, um, I could have I could have kept a lot more today, but I was throwing them back. I wasn't planning on keeping any fish, and then one swallowed the hook, and I didn't think he was gonna make it. So I kept him, and I was like, if I'm gonna be keeping this fish and taking the time to do that, I may as well keep some other ones. So we ended up with six not too big bluegills. So it's just gonna be a little snack right now. But trust me, sometimes when I do fish fries, it's it takes hours because it's just a ton. Angling spiders in the house. What's going on? Appreciate you, angling spiders. Um, we are, what is it, May right now? Yes, yeah, so here in just a few days, I haven't forgot about you. June is the month that Angling Spiders is going to be sponsoring all my live streams. So I'll get them linked at the top of my description. And if you guys want to go check them out, they got a great channel. They do some awesome stuff over there, and they're really supportive people. So barely stopped by. I need to go outside again before I fall asleep. I'm so tired right now. Have a great day. Enjoy your fish. All right, Living for Jesus. Thanks for coming in. Appreciate you. I'm going to try, I'm going to make an attempt here to do something. I don't know how I'm going to have you guys, oh, I'm dumb, okay. I'll just put it on the ground, I don't know why I need it on the counter. I'll just raise it up. If I turn it this way, trying to get over my allergies, it's been rough. Yeah, allergies suck. <laughs> allergies are no good. If I raise you up even higher, I think you guys will be able to see everything. Alright, let's... Angle this down. Yeah, sorry to hear that, Dusty. That ain't no good. All right, we're caught up. Yeah, and actually, I need to be careful what I do the next few days. I might have to go get a COVID test because I feel 100% fine, just tired. But my, my girlfriend's mom wasn't feeling very good yesterday. And I was joking with her. I was like, because she was like touching the snacks that I was touching and stuff. And she didn't touch anything that I ate afterwards or anything like that. But she's like, oh, you know, I don't feel good. And I was like, well, well, you know, get away from me. Don't make me sick. And she had had a COVID test two days before. Because she's a teacher, so they get tested right away. And she was negative. She just took another one and was positive. And it could be a false positive, but she is really sick. She's got something going on. She doesn't sound good and, you know, all that all that stuff. But she went to, to work today and then, got, and then got the results of her COVID test. So she probably shouldn't have gone there in case she, you know, got anyone else sick. But now that classifies as me having a close encounter with someone who is positive. Well, hopefully, you guys, hopefully you guys can see everything I'm doing here. Um, so I may have to go get a COVID test or something. And my plans for this weekend, I just found that out between last live and this live. And now I'm like, okay, so my plans for this weekend now, where I was supposed to do some research and I needed someone to go out with me, I might not be able to do that. I might have to take another week off, in which case I don't know exactly what I'll do. But now I'm here in the house and my family's going to be coming over and I don't know whether to call them or what. It's not like I'm positive or I've tested positive, but I've been around someone who did and I think it would be irresponsible for me to just go around a bunch of people and just act like nothing's wrong, you know, without knowing whether I might have contracted something or not. So I just whisked the egg there and just whatever. I'm going to put some, put some flour here and like I said, we'll dip the egg. Or dip the fish in the egg, dredge it in the Louisiana seasoned fish fry stuff, and uh, we'll fry it. And you guys can watch that whole process. Um, and I've got some tongs here to pull it out so I'm not burning myself. So i got the whole setup here. This smells hot, so I, I just turned it down just below medium. It might even need to go below that. It got, it got hot quick. So yeah, especially with her mom being in her 60s and her dad being almost 70. This is my girlfriend because she's the youngest in the family. Um, I just worry about them, you know, having COVID. So we got seven people in here, 15 thumbs up. We're 45 minutes into this thing. So you guys, if anyone just stopped in, you came at the best time. We're getting the fish dipped in uh, egg. I got to get some flour on the plate so I can dredge them in. Flour. I keep saying flour. It's the breading. It's the Louisiana seasoned crispy fish fry. So not my absolute favorite, but it's, it's still really good. And I think what I'm going to do, let's take a vote, guys. I'm either going to put Old Bay or I'm going to put Tony's in there. I'm going to mix it around just so it's even extra season. So let's take a vote. I think it said there were seven people in here. You guys choose. The, the They're both, I think they both have their own salt. Um, this is that crab seasoning stuff. This is like a Creole seasoning. They both taste fairly similar, um, but a little different in their own way, but... 
Let's take a vote. Uh, Tony's or Old Bay? Whichever one gets the highest amount of votes. I'm going to put some of it, just a little bit, in the breading and mix it all around so it'll be extra seasoned. Have you ever double coated it? Do you, you mean uh, you mean put it in the egg, dredge it in the breading, and then put it back in the egg and then back in the breading? I think I have, but I'm not going to do that this time. Tony's, Tony's. Oh gosh, I think Tony's is going to win. I'm fine with that. They're both delicious. We got two votes for Tony's. Can Old Bay make a comeback? No, we got three votes for Tony's. What up, Evan TV? All right, three votes for Tony's. We have eight people in here. So if we get two more votes for Tony's and Tony's wins, if we'd have to get at least four votes for Old Bay for Old Bay to win. Hopefully we don't end up with a tie. No one said Old Bay yet, though. Tony's is where it is. <laughs> what up, J.A.'s? Did you end up catching that big fish? You said you had a big one on. Right when I got my bass stuff out, um, first the bluegill bit, so I, re I reeled that in. That was probably fish number 26 or 27 for the live stream, something like that. And then uh, it started pouring on me, so I had to end the thing. I don't know if you were in there or not. All right, we're going Tony's. Not a single person said Old Bay. No love for the Old Bay. I think they're both delicious. So I, I'm fine with either one. So we're putting some Tony's in there. I don't want to go too crazy, but you can never really have enough Tony's. That's probably plenty of Tony's right there. And then I'll take a different fork because I don't want to use the one that's got egg all over it. And we're just going to mix it all around. So now we've got Louisiana seasoned crispy fish fry. Extra seasoned with a little bit of Tony's. Can't go wrong. Can't go wrong with the Tony's. There we go. I'll put just a tiny bit more Tony's. There we go. All right, we're good to go now. And this oil is real hot, so I need to get this stuff going pretty quick. But got a little more Tony's in there. Hopefully you guys can see everything that I'm doing here. I wish I had a better angle, but this is what I got to work with. So dipping it in the in the egg, getting both sides coated with the breading, which is this Louisiana fish fry. It's already seasoned, but I put some Tony's in there. I did either Tony's or Old Bay, I can't remember. One of the two last time. Maybe even taco seasoning. I don't know. I did it because I was making fish tacos with crappie. Oh yeah, that's, that's hot oil right there. Can you guys see it sizzling? Not really. Let's see if I can get you even higher. Yeah, not really. But what I will do, so I'll bring you guys over here. So that's that sizzling right there. I think you guys want this view. So you can see the sizzling fish up closer. Yeah, that might be the way to go. All right. So... There are 11 decent fillets. I had six fish, and then the, the 12th fillet got all jacked up. I should have put a little more breading on this plate, too. I'm afraid I'm going to run out, because I like to really coat it with breading. So with how hot the oil is, that piece is probably about done already. Um, we'll flip it over, though, and try to get both sides going. Well, I'll try to. <laughs> yeah, that, that piece is about done. I'm going to turn it down. It was... I started with it a little above medium, and now it's like, I don't know, three quarters of the way to medium, because it, it just got really hot. But I'm having a hard time flipping it for some reason. I never have these issues until I go live. Come on. I'm really struggling. <laughs> I don't want to destroy this filet, but I cannot pick it up and flip it. There we go. All right, so these ones have got to be done here. We're going to put them down. Let some of that oil drip off, let them cool down, and then I'm excited to try it out. And I'm at my parents' house, so I don't know what types of... That one looks so good. That stuff's real crispy. I don't know what types of uh, sauce or hot sauce or whatever they have to put on the fish. I mean, bluegill's delicious by itself without anything else on it when you fry it up. But I'll try some... I will might try some sauce on it or something. I'll see what they got. Okay, so... Get these guys going. Just a few more fillets here to go. Like I said, it's not going to be a whole meal here. It'll be a little, a smaller meal. And if I had planned this out better, I would have had some salad or mac and cheese or just, you know, bread or something on the side with it. But like I said, me and, me and Ted from Off the Hook Outdoors, we got together this weekend and we ate real good. So 
me having a little smaller meal is probably a good idea. All right, I'll get with the chat in a second. I just want to keep this going. I don't want the oil to get all burnt and gross. Okay, let's get this guy flipped if I can. I don't think I can flip it. There we go. Get this guy flipped. Oh yeah, it looks so crispy and so good. Wow, I never struggled this bad to flip a dang piece of fish. There we go. <laughs> I see what people are saying in the chat. I'm going to take those pieces off. Ah! Fish snack. Yeah, just a fish snack. Just a little fish snack. So I only got, I only uh, whisked up one egg. I think that'll be enough. But what I'm worried about is the breading here. I think I'm going to need a little more breading to finish this off. I'm trying to do it with just this. But if it means that I'm going light on the breading, I don't want to do that. Because I like them crispy. There we go. There we go. And I've, I've been requested a lot to do more catch and cook and just just cooking videos in general on my channel which I understand that everybody likes food so I have recorded some I've done some fried morel mushrooms I've recorded some frying of different fish uh, maybe some grilling of some fish and stuff like that so I've recorded plenty of good stuff on the channel uh, well for the channel I just haven't got it edited yet I'm, I'm so behind on videos it's getting ridiculous so I really need to strap down this summer and get get on a good schedule where I can do a live stream or two every week but I can also get like a video out. Like getting one video out a week would I don't know if that's possible but that would still have me way behind on stuff I've got stuff from a, over a year ago that I want to edit and put out and I still haven't so I don't know if I'll ever get caught up it's not a super bad situation to be in having all that extra content that you can put out whenever but the problem is as I get better with recording and filming and editing and all that stuff I don't want to be going through footage that I did a full year ago that seems more amateur compared to what I'm doing now but it is what it is I'll get it out when I can get it out and I'll do what I can so if I go through any of that old stuff and I'm like, this isn't very good, then I might not put any of it up or I might just put little clips or something, but we'll see. We'll see. I'm hoping this summer I can get a little more caught up. The problem is, the summer is when the weather's nice and I've already got, I've got research stuff to do. I've got uh, some stuff I'm learning on my own. I've got work this summer. And then also, it's going to be nice. The weather's going to be nice. So I'm going to want to do some fishing. And so balancing all that with trying to make time to see my girlfriend and see my family because I'm two and a half hours away from them. And somehow doing all the live streams that I want to and, you know, giveaways. And people have talked about me doing tournaments again like I used to do. And Yeah, it's a lot It's a lot to try to balance, especially with editing a bunch of videos. And I take a long time to edit the way that I do it. I, I, I want them to look good and I use my computer and I don't know. I'm going to pull those off in a second. I need to walk, rinse my hands real quick. They're covered in breading. And I need to put just a little bit more breading on this plate. Even though there's... I mean, shoot, there's only two more fillet. I want to try to do it with the breading we have, although I'm pretty much... I pretty much ran out. So these guys have got to be done here. I said just a little fish snack, but honestly, this is this is probably a decent meal for... for me, especially right now. I'm not trying to eat too much, so... Yeah. Decent little amount. Let's get this next piece in. And I'll get with the chat in a second. Let me get these last two, three fillets in here. And I'll see what you guys are saying. But there's just like no breading left here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I thought I could get through it without more breading, but I've got to put a little bit more on there. Out of paper towels now. Let's put just a little pile of breading on the plate. That's a lot more than I wanted to. That sucks. There's going to be some wasted for sure. Um, and then everyone wanted me to put some Tonys on it. So we'll put some Tonys on it. There we 
go. Plenty of Tonys on that. That'll be extra season. We'll mix it all around there. Before I get that piece coated, let's flip this so we don't burn it. There we go. Sizzling. Oh, okay. So I think the oil is still hot from when I had turned it up above medium to like medium high. But if I were doing a, a lot of fish, one, if I was doing a lot of fish with just that little bit of um, oil in the bottom of that pan, I don't know, I may have to top it off with some different oil or some change out some oil or something. If I was doing more fish than this, I wouldn't be pan frying it. I'd be deep frying it with some more oil. But what I'm trying to say is the temperature is going down and I'd probably have to turn it back up if I were to keep frying these. Um, the reason why it's still doing so good, even down here, it's like between low and medium right now. It's because I had it so high and left it for a long time before I started actually doing this. All right, and then we've got, there's a couple tiny, I don't know if you guys can see it, but there's a couple little chunks in here. And it was just where I kind of messed up the flame process. But I'm going to take those chunks. I'm not going to bread them. I'm going to put them in the oil and just get them, get them hot and get them cooked. And then I'm going to feed them to one of the dogs around here. And they'll be, they'll be happy to have them. Okay. I got a lot to clean up, but I'm gonna wait till after the live stream to clean up. I'm just gonna I'm gonna pull these off and I'm gonna eat them and chat with you guys and see what's up. Okay, so this piece ought to be done right here. Oh yeah, that looks delicious. That looks delicious. It all smells so good. And so these pieces can be flipped. They just need a little bit longer on the other side. And then what? Like I told you guys, I'm gonna take couple little scraps here. I'm just going to put them in the oil. They'll get done so fast because they're so thin. I just want them to turn white instead of clear like that or pinkish like that. And I'll pull them off and I'll, I don't know, I'll put them on the side of the plate or something. Those will go to one of the dogs. Dogs love fish, especially my dogs, they love fish. These are almost done. I can turn the heat off now because it's plenty hot. Let's see what people are saying. I know I'm a little behind. Let's see, is Woman Outdoors in here? Oh, I'm not meaning to zoom in. I don't understand what's going on. Hold on, guys. Why is my phone doing this? This only happens on my channel. There, okay. Did you see Guggen was coming out with fish frying stuff? I'm sure they are. Any way they can make money. What up, Mark J? How's it going, buddy? Mullet man doing catch and cooks. Yeah, I need to do more catch and cooks for sure. I'm just, like I said, I'm way, be I'm way behind on getting content out. Like, way, way behind. There's Molly. She said, I want some. What time is it? 3.26? She, you don't even get off till like 5, right? You taking a break or something? LFG, that's why you started YouTube. Really? Well, thanks for coming in, Molly. I appreciate you. Making you hungry? Come over here. I'll give you some. <laughs> d -Nell, what's going on, bro? Uh, I did a live stream for like five hours, man. I did a long live stream, and I caught some fish. And towards the end of the live stream, one of the fish, they swallowed the hook. And so I didn't think they were going to survive. I think they were going to die, which obviously that's not what I was trying to do. I was trying to release them. But because he did that, I decided to keep them and then I would fry them up and eat them. You know, fish fish fried. Fried fish is always good. But, bro, I, uh, I decided I didn't want to do all this work to just fry up one fish. So I caught five more. And so this is six little, smaller, little bluegills. Little sunfish. And I'm frying them up. And these little pieces I'm pulling off here. I'm fine with just those little ones. Those are going to be for a dog. Because these are just little scraps. So I didn't even put breading on them. Even though they got a tiny bit of breading from the thing. So if you guys are interested in someone who keeps it positive And does live streams and helps people grow. And, and links people together. Uh, you should go check out D-Nail from the Tribulations Kids. He's a good dude. He's a good dude for sure. And there, Randy just shared his link if you want to check him out. He doesn't really do the fishing thing. The fishing thing. He's not. He's not into fishing or whatever. He might be, but he doesn't do it on his channel. Um, but you can go check him out and see what he's all about. Me and him have been connected for a while. He's a good dude for sure. And he's got a he's got a Discord server that I'm part of. And if you go to his videos, you'll see the link for that Discord server in the description. So go check him out if you like what he does. You know. You can subscribe and connect to them. Randy said, hit the like button. We got 10 people in here, 19 thumbs up. So I'm going to go somewhere and eat some of this fish. Give me a second because I want to check. I know I got some tea I can drink. 
But I want to see if there's any sauce. Any type of sauce I can put on here. Let's see. I think I'm going to do Frank's Red Hot. And knowing my family, if they have tartar sauce, it's probably expired. Yeah, they do have tartar sauce, and it is expired. So. <laughs> I knew it. Do we got some barbecue or some ketchup or... There's some barbecue. Okay. That'll be fine. I got some Frank's Red Hot and some Gates Barbecue. So I'll be right back, guys. We're going to go set up at... Uh, should we do the table over here? No, it's kind of dark in there. Yeah, I'll just set up in this room. I'll just stay in the kitchen. That'll be fine. And we'll just chat. All right, all right, all right, all right. I could have gone live from my GoPro in here and had my phone to talk to. It would have been better quality. Thanks, Sunfish. You're awesome, bro. I'm just here hanging out. Appreciate it. Yeah, we're going to taste it for sure, Indiana. Thanks for being here, man. Sorry I haven't been very active in the Discord lately. I try, but I've been uh, dealing with some family stuff, and then we got... Um, we were on a trip for a week, me and my girl. So, just got back from that. So, I want to figure out how I can aim this at what I'm doing and read the chat at the same time. All right. I can sit here and eat it, but I'm going to warn you, I'm going to have to do that to read the chat. So, 11 awesome people in here. 20 thumbs up. Thank you all for being here. So, this is this is the final product. Some crispy, delicious uh, fried bluegills. We got the dogs here. You guys want to see the dogs get a snack? Here, I'm going to turn this around. All right. Come here, guys. Come here. She's deaf. Yeah, you're deaf, but you know what this means. Here. So we'll give them some. Give her some. Give her some. And there you go. All right, all gone. Now they want more. <laughs> yep. She's not deaf. She's faking it. That's my sister. It's funny because every once in a while, you'll make a noise and she'll snap her head up like she can hear it. <laughs> I think that too sometimes that she's not deaf. She's just faking it. But uh, every time I come in the house, she freaks out when she sees me. And I came in the house uh, earlier from fishing and she was asleep and I was making all types of noise. You know, I'm not a quiet dude. But, uh, yeah, she definitely did not hear me. <laughs> definitely not. LOL, she faking it. <laughs> sometimes, man, I wonder. I do wonder sometimes. We got Fluff in the house. What's going on, Fluff? Thanks for coming in. So these are uh, bluegills. These are sunfish. They look just like this fish on my shirt. I was catching them earlier, and I was actually holding them up to the shirt, and I was like, look, they look exactly the same. So that's what these are. And I caught a lot of keepers today, probably, you know, at least 12 or 15. And I caught like 26 total bluegills and a couple bass uh, today. And then it started raining on me. And now I look outside and it's sunny again and the weather's nice. But I don't think I'm going to go live fishing again. I think I'm just going to hang out in here. I need a shower because I got poured on with the rain and everything like that. But I'm just going to stay live. Uh, just for, I kept six of these. One of them swallowed the hook towards the end of my live stream. I did like a five plus hour live stream this morning. A lot of awesome people in there. And uh, I kept one, and I was like, well, if I'm going to cut them, and I'm going to fry them, I'm going to do all that, let's make a thing of it. You know, let's let's keep at least five. Let's do a live stream. Let's hang out with people uh, while it's raining and everything. So I caught I caught that one, and then out of all the other ones I, kept, I caught, I kept the five nicest ones after that, and they're still pretty small. Like, this is, what, this is one of the fillets from each fish. So you get two about that size from each fish. And some of them are a little smaller. So 12 fillets here from, from six bluegills. And uh, it started raining on me at the end of that stream. So I ended it up. And then I came in here and went live. And now I'm eating these fried bluegills. So here's what I put on them before I dig in. And now it's killing me not digging in. But I just want to talk with you guys and everything. But I put this Louisiana seasoned crispy fish fry. This is the breading I put on. Obviously, look at that picture. Looks just like them, doesn't it? Just bigger bigger fillets on there. So I put that, but I also, I mixed it with some seasoning. I, I made it interactive. I asked the people in the chat, should I do Old Bay or should I do Tony's? And everyone said Tony. Literally every single person said Tony's. So I put some Tony's in the, 
the breading as well. And so, uh, got that extra kick in there. And then I'll eat some of them plain just to taste them. I'll eat some with the Frank's Red Hot Buffalo sauce. And I'll have some Gates Barbecue, which is some Kansas City barbecue. And that's that's where I am right now. It's just south of Kansas City, Missouri. I.L. Fishing. Logan, what's going on, bro? What's going on? You, you missed me cooking the fish. You can go back and watch it if you want. But you're at the good part, because now I'm going to taste it. And I'll let you guys know how it is. Super crispy. So this is what we're dealing with right here. Look at, look at that. I even gave some to the dogs, too. I didn't give them the fried fish. I cooked them some in the oil, but I didn't fry it. She's over here spinning, man. I want to show you guys something pretty cool. I'm going to give her just a little tiny piece. And you shouldn't really give dogs fried fish. But I want to show you guys what she does, because she's crazy. This dog is a ballerina. Come here. Come here. Look at what she does. Look at that. She's just on her back. She's spinning. She's spinning. That's just the back legs. I want to get a video of her doing it. She's still spinning. I'm going to give it to her. I'm not just teasing her. Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> Here, I'll give her. There, she got it. Isn't that crazy, though, how she does that? She's wild. You can literally, like, when, I, when we give her treats, because we'll give her a treat halfway through the day when she goes outside, or we'll give her a treat at the end of the day, whatever, you know, for being a good, good girl and going outside so she doesn't end up going to the bathroom in the house. I'll hold the treat up. She'll go in, she'll go on her back legs and just dance in a circle. She's wild. Yeah, that's super cute. Yeah, she's crazy. <laughs> she's crazy. Anyway, without further ado, it's cooled down now, so it's time to test it out, taste it. And, of course, it's delicious. You see it's nice and white, clean fish inside, and then crispy coated on the outside. If I pick up a spray bottle, I'm not going to spray her because this ain't even the water bottle. But if I point a spray bottle at her, she'll, she'll stop. Knock that off. She's deaf, so me saying no doesn't do anything. She's like completely deaf. How many fish did you cook? Just six bluegills. Clip that and make a short video. I'll just take, uh, it'll look better. Yeah, I'll just take one on my phone and make a short. The bat, the dancing ballerina dog. That'd be a good short video. This part I hate about the cooking show, the teas. Oh yeah, I'm just showing you the delicious fit, the food, but you can't eat it yourself. Well, I'm sure wherever you are, there's at least bluegill crappie or some type of panfish. And so you go catch them, you cook them up just like this, or you put your own favorite breading on them. And there you go. It's it's quick. I mean, most days when the bite's better, when it hasn't just rained and poured and got all muddy like it is out there, which normally doesn't hurt the bite that much, but today it was slow. I only caught like 27 fish in five hours, which is really slow. Um, but normally if I wanted fried bluegill, the entire process from getting bait, going out there, catching them, cooking them, and eating them, probably an hour and a half, and I'd in an hour and a half, I could go from sitting there going, I want some fried bluegill, to sitting there and having a plate of fried bluegill, normally. And I might have been able to do that today, because I caught a few uh, good-sized keeper bluegills towards the beginning of the stream. I just wasn't trying to keep them, and I also wasn't trying to end the stream and come back inside. But it's delicious, of course, and so I'm going to put some Gates barbecue on some of these. I'm going to put some uh, that Frank Red Hot on the rest of it. I was telling you guys, this isn't going to be a full meal. It's just going to be a little snack, but... Look at that plate. That's a meal for me. I'm good. So I'm just going to eat this and just, just chat with the people. And Once this is over, we can talk for a bit, and then I'll probably end the stream, and I need a shower. So, But yeah, it's a beautiful day out there now. It, it was pouring on me, and now it's just like beautiful outside. No, you can't come up here. Don't make me get the spray bottle back out. 11 people in here. 23 thumbs up. I'll still be here. I'm going back to see how you cooked it. All right, buddy. I don't know when we'll be there, but it'll be soon. Probably. Okay, Kat, well, I'm going to, once I'm done with this, let me know if you get a time. I appreciate you coming by. It's been, it's been, you know, what, two weeks since I've seen you or something like that. So that's my sister, everybody. You better be nice to her. I'm blocking you from my channel. <laughs> that stuff's hot, but it's good. So yeah, Kat, let me know when you're coming over. I'm going to get a shower after this and then I'll be ready. You got time. Zach's out running errands for customers. All right. Mark J. Larson, it's raining up here now. Yeah, I got poured on today. It sucks because, look, I left Missouri and went to Pennsylvania all weekend long, right? 
apparently it poured down here for a lot of the time that I was gone, or at least it poured hard for a little bit. I didn't look up the weather here, but I got back and there was, it was obvious that it had <clears throat> rained significantly. I need something to drink. Um, but up there we were getting, we were getting rained on. I mean, I don't know, Mark, if you were there when they got rained on up at the uh, get together, but they all got rained on and it kind of messed with the fishing, whatever. Then on the way back, we got poured on and we were driving. Of course it was when Molly was driving. And it was like, the rain came down. It was only for like half an hour, but it was so hard you couldn't even see. And then we got little sprinkles here and there. Then I get back here and everything's wet, but it's a nice day outside. I'm out there catching fish. It's a little chilly, but everything's fine. And then, I mean, I did a five-hour fishing live stream. I can't complain. But at the end of it, I started getting poured on again. And then once I ended it, it really started coming down as I was packing up. So, can't escape from the rain this time of year, man. Springtime is just rain, rain, rain. Treat her with the same respect we treat you. None at all. Jesse, you can make fun of me, but if you say something to my sister, you're out of the giveaway. <laughs> I'm waiting to see how long you are going to talk without eating. <laughs> Listen, chat first, and then I come second. So I'm going to be eating my food, but I also want to keep up with the chat. This stuff is so good, though. I like the hot sauce, but... It masks the flavor of the fish too much. And I'm worried that the, 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 oh my gosh. I meant to put a little bit of barbecue in the corner. I forgot how liquidy Gates is. Look at that. The whole plate's barbecue now. Goodness. <laughs> That's not what I meant to do. The whole plate is barbecue now. That's hilarious. I'm used to, you know, that thick barbecue sauce that just barely comes out. So now we got a lot of barbecue on this plate, so. I'll probably put the hot sauce away and just use barbecue now. I don't want to waste too much of it. All right. Oh, you were there when they got poured on. Deer Slayer, what's up? We eating some fried bluegill. My video with you stepping on my fishing rod is coming out at 6 p.m. Oh, my goodness. Did I step on it or did I almost step on it? I apologize, bro. That's awesome. Yeah, I came up to Pennsylvania at a good time. I didn't know, or I knew that the rendezvous was happening, but I didn't know what weekend it was. And to me, I'm just like, oh, that's good for them. You know, I live in Missouri. I won't get to be there, obviously. But me and Ted, last year around this time, we tried to get together and do some fishing because, you know, he's cool. Uh, he helps my channel out a lot. I've helped him out, whatever. We do stuff together all the time. He's always up on my panel. And I tried to get together with him last year, but... Last minute, we both got busy and couldn't do it. So this year, the only weekend that worked out for me and him getting together was last weekend, the one that just happened. And he goes, oh, by the way, that Saturday, that's when Freezer Brown's thing is. And I said, oh, dude, we got to go up there. And so it would have been cool to hang out with you guys longer. But I drove 14 hours to get on a bunch of fish with him. And so, I mean, if we would have got up earlier, when was that, Saturday? We probably could have came out there and hung out longer. We probably, probably should have. But he was with his kids. They were taking forever. Molly was sleeping and all that stuff. But we finally got out there. We hung out with you guys for, what, 90 minutes, two hours, something like that. Um, probably longer because we did the we did the entire... We were there for 30 minutes before we started the, the fishing thing. The fishing thing lasted a whole hour. Then we hung around a little bit. We, did, we shot the um, crossbow and did that whole thing and tried to find Ted's bolt. Then we hung out for another... 30 minutes and then left. So we were probably there two and a half hours or, or, or two, two hours and 45 minutes, something like that. But I would love to hang out there longer. I would have loved to fish more. It was just, we did the best we could. And it was really cool uh, meeting you and all those other people up there. So if you guys don't know Mark J. Larson, definitely go check him out. He's an awesome dude. And maybe you hook set to him. His luck will run off on you because he wins every giveaway he enters. <laughs> Cap. We have a ton of tadpoles in our backyard pond now after all the rain. All right, so give it a give it a year or two, and I can go out there and get some uh, some bullfrogs, and we can have frog legs. Man, oh man, this stuff turned out good. Soon to be little frogs. Yep, and then big frogs, and then food. 
You got huge bullfrogs too now. Is Zach out there trying to catch them and fry up their legs? Because I'll, I'll come out there, man. The French that was on the plate mixed with the barbecue. So now I got spicy barbecue. That's good though. And you got crawdads? Okay, so you got an entire bait pond for me when I go. They have a... I don't know how big their pond is, but... Two acres or something. They got a nice pond out there. And it's got bass and bluegill. And it's got some catfish and carp, but it's the ones that I put in. I don't know if there's any other catfish or anything out besides what I put in. There might be. But it's mostly bass and bluegill. And so if there's a little pond by there with crawdads and, uh, you know, tadpoles and frogs, there's, there's just free bait for me right there. Yeah, Chris, frog legs are yummy, man. I agree. If you hadn't stayed up all night, you could have gotten up earlier. Yeah, that's true, because Friday night, we were live until 1.30. And then me and Ted got up at five something to go fishing before we even, before everyone else got up and we even got out there. So we definitely made the made the most of it. What? She's freaking out. Well, look who it is! Off the doors, out hook. This one is the one we just dug, so it's small, not the shared pond. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying you got the big pond we can fish. And then you have the one you just dug that's full of bait for me to use when I go fish the shared pond. She's saying shared pond because she moved into a house that's got a pond between her house and the neighbor's property. And so it's kind of weird how that works, you know, because if, if, if she wants to stock fish or she wants to you know, put something in the pond. It's like, does she have to get permission from the neighbor? How does that work? Because it's a shared, the, the property line is right between the two ponds. It's really weird. What up? Stopping back in. I'm working on the roof, so I'll be watching. Cool, man. Be safe up there. Don't, uh, don't fall off the roof watching my live stream. I'll feel bad. And I could have went to bed. Ray, Randy, no one's holding you hostage, man. We appreciate you being there. You know what's funny? I'll give you some behind the scenes scoop. We were like, we meant to go live way earlier, but we were out fishing and doing all types of stuff. And we had dinner and everything with Ted's family. Got to know them better. And we had planned on going live. We're like, we'll go live tonight. I was thinking it'd be like 8, 30, 9 o'clock we went live. Oh no. We didn't go live till like 11. And I'm sitting there looking at the, the, time on my computer thinking it's only 10 because my computer was in central time we started going live around 11 and we set up the live stream and you know i scheduled it so like five minutes before it started there wasn't anyone in there that's fine a minute or two before it started there wasn't anyone in there i'm like man we might not get anybody in here because there's a lot of people live it's late um i don't know we told people we'd be live but that was hours ago and then i see your name come in the chat and you're like what's up and it was you know it said randy missouri outlaw randy and me and Ted were like, you can always count on Randy to be there. So you're uh, you're the the trustworthy one, man. We were like, someone's got to come in, right? And then Randy came in. And we're like, all right, it's all good. Randy's there. We at least got someone cool to hang out with. <laughs> I want some fish now tonight. All right, Dean, now you, you have a, like a seafood restaurant or something near you. You got some frozen uh, fish sticks or something. Not that frozen fish sticks could compare to this, but hopefully you can get you some fish, man. That's what I'm saying. Be careful, Ted, up there. Don't be watching. That's how I think when everyone's like, I'm watching and I'm driving right now. And they might be listening and driving, but I, 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 when, I when I hear that, I think they're sitting there staring at their phone, watching while they're driving. And I'm like, look. I get it, but I don't want someone to crash while they're watching my live stream because I'll feel bad. You know? Ten people in here, 24 thumbs up. Thank you, thank you. And the last live stream is about five hours long. You guys can skip around there if you want to see it. We caught mostly bluegill, caught a ton of them, and caught some bass as well. 
and I kept, I only kept six bluegills. I wasn't even planning on keeping them, but towards the end, a fish swallowed the hook, and so I just said, I'm going to keep a few. Kept six bluegills and fried them up with some Louisiana fish fry, this crispy seasoned fish fry, and I put some Tony's in there too. So these things got some zing to them, right? And I actually dumped a whole bunch of uh, Gates barbecue on my plate. So now they're swimming in Gates. And I had some Frank's Red Hot on the plate as well. So now they're swimming in hot spicy Gates. So it's delicious right here. I got five fillets left. So I've eaten seven fillets and I got five left. Because we had six bluegills, two fillets from each fish. We're an hour and 20 minutes in. All right. So I'll be live a little bit longer. And then I'm going to go get a shower and get ready for my family to come over here. Hey, you used to video. I used to video and eat and drive. She's all right. All right. She gives me crap. This is one of my first videos on the channel. It's not even a good video. But I used to edit with a different laptop and it sucked. And so I got a new laptop. It's a little better. I took a video of me driving to go get the new laptop and then showing it off or unboxing it or whatever. The beginning of that thing, I'm driving. I've got the GoPro clipped to my, I think it's clipped to the the like fan thing on my car. So it's just kind of clipped there and looking at me. And so I'm driving. It's looking at me. And I'm eating a slice of gas station pizza while I'm driving. I wasn't being unsafe. I'm driving, take a bite of pizza, whatever. But she's like, you're driving, you're videoing, you're eating out there. She's like, you're going to crash. I'm like, I'm, I'm being careful, trust me. But she's a little sister. That's what they do. They look out for you. Fish sticks, LOL, and barbecue sauce. There you go. There you go. There's nothing wrong with that. I would, I would much rather have this uh, fresh fried bluegill with some, bar with some hot sauce and some barbecue sauce. But not everybody can go out and catch fresh bluegill and have them with barbecue sauce and, you know, uh, hot sauce and everything. So, fish sticks are good, are good too. You can't go wrong with some fish sticks. Ted, I am watching and I got my earphones in. You better be careful, bro. How long do you cook each side for the gills? Oh, man, you guys were watching. It's going to depend on where your heat's at, obviously, but that's a thin piece, right? That's probably a third of an inch thick. So not, not a very thick piece right there. I probably left each piece on after it had been breaded. And I just pan fried it in the pan. What would you guys say? You guys were watching. It was probably down for 60 seconds on each side. Probably do 60 seconds, flip it 60 more seconds. If you're pan frying, honestly, the breading tells tells you what you need to do because once it starts to look kind of golden brown and when you flip it over to the other side if it feels crispy on one side and then it you know eventually feels crispy on the other side it's done it's good to go that inside will be cooked when you're <clears throat> when you're deep frying it it's even better i'm just i'm choking over here <laughs> when you're deep frying it it's even easier because when when it's cooked and the a lot of that moisture comes out of the meat It'll go from the bottom, it'll float up to the top when it's done. So when it floats up to the top, that's when you know the fish is cooked. But if you're feeling the outside and it's still kind of soft or it's not as dark and golden brown as you want, you leave it. Because I'll, I'll get it fully cooked and then I'll I'll flip it over. I'll leave it. I'll let it, I'll let it get more gold. You need, to, you need to stop. 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 I let it get more golden brown before I uh, actually pull it out to start cooling down. But you want to be careful because you don't want it to get too too golden brown on the outside because that'll mean the inside will start to get overdone and a little chewy and stuff like that. So I, it makes it sound more difficult than it is. And the first couple times you fry stuff, maybe you don't do it exactly the way you want it. But you'll learn really quick. Frying fish is easy. For me, the easiest way to cook fish is frying it. Either that or doing it on the stove top, just like grilled on the stove top, basically. Those are a lot easier than some crazy recipe. He used a whipped egg wash. Yep. Yep, I dunked it in uh I dunked it in a uh, whisked up egg on each side, not just the yolks or not just the whites, whatever. I just I just cracked an egg, whipped it up. 
dipped the fillets in each side, and then I dredged it in uh, the mixture of fish fry and Tony's. And I got plenty of it on each side, and I put it in. Now, Indiana Chris was saying uh, you, what you can also do, which which I've done before, is you can double uh, you can double bread them basically, where you do that, and then you dip them again in the uh, the egg or whatever you're using, and then you dip them again in the breading, and then they're extra crispy. But these got plenty crispy, honestly. You need some poutine with that, bro. That stuff is fire. You all know what poutine is. I always thought it was just french fries and gravy, and it may be, and you might be able to mix what's in there and stuff like that, but the poutine that we had at a local restaurant, I forget what the restaurant was called, but it's it's one that's close, Crossroads Cafe or something, I don't know, it's it's there in, in Edinburgh by the lake where Ted's Lake House is. We ate there twice, we got it delivered once, then we ate there a second time. And it was these delicious crispy french fries, right, and they're coated in gravy, brown gravy, but they also have uh, cheese curds. Not like fried breaded cheese curds, just like just chunks of cheese. I think it's mozzarella or something, some white cheese that's melted in there as well. And I know that sounds so unhealthy. That sounds so unhealthy, and I'm sure it is. This can't be a health food. But Ted ordered some, and I took a couple bites, and I was like, waitress. I was like, we need to get another order of these. That stuff was so good. It's not something you can eat every day. You probably shouldn't even eat it once a week. Maybe once a month at the most. But poutine is some good stuff, man. <sighs> Ted, I'm not going to lie to you. I've been craving it ever since we had it. But I'm afraid if I got it somewhere else, it wouldn't be as good because those were some really crispy fries. Especially the second um, the second order we got out that me and Molly ordered and put on our tab, those fries were even crispier because was, that was brand new. You could tell it was hot. That stuff was cooked even more fresh. About a minute or so. Yeah, I did about a minute or so on each side, what Chris said. Deep frying, yes, it will float up. Chris said you did an awesome job. I appreciate it. If you're just talking about me cooking the fish, then yeah, thank you. Thank you, thank you. I've cooked a lot of fish in the couple years that I've been fishing. And before I fished, uh, I was a health... I know you can't tell because I'm a big boy. <laughs> but I was, a, I was a health food nut for... For about a year there where I was working out every day and I wasn't really eating many carbs or anything like that. I did pretty well for a while before I just kind of gave up on all that. Um, back then I was like 155 pounds or something. So, this same height but 155. So I was a little too skinny. But, back then I cooked up a lot of fresh fish and um, meat and stuff like that as well. I just didn't catch it myself. I'd go and buy it. That's back when I had more money to buy healthy food, more time to mess with it, and I cared more about my health. And now I need to get back to caring more about my health because I've gained a little more weight lately than I want to. And I say that as I'm sitting here eating fried fish, but this is the only meal I've had today. I had a little bit of snacks, like I had a couple handfuls of snacks while I was out fishing, but I've been up since four or something, so. I think I'm doing pretty good today, but I probably shouldn't eat anything else for the rest of the day after this fish. And I've got some pizza in the fridge, so we'll see. I'm going to try to be good for the rest of the day. Ted's getting some poutine this weekend. You got to. Uh, you said your family's coming over. You should have some people try it who haven't tried it. Just get like two orders for the table and have everyone try a little bit. Stuff is good. IL Fishing says, what's the sauce? Man, so we don't have a lot of sauce here because I'm at my parents' house. So, I, if I were them, I'd get some more sauce. But, we got Frank's Red Hot. This is the Buffalo version. I like the normal Frank's Red Hot. But, I put some of that on the plate, right? And, it took away a little too much of the flavor of the fish. I kind of like the fish just more plain better. But, I meant to put a little bit of this Gates barbecue. This is, uh, Gates is a restaurant. I don't know if they have them everywhere, but they have them in Kansas City. And, it's that, it's that famous Kansas City barbecue. Um... Kansas City takes their barbecue seriously. So the Gates sauce is delicious. The Gates restaurant, is, is it's all right. It's not the best barbecue place in town. It's, it's pretty good. It beats barbecue from other from other cities, but Kansas City barbecue is where it's at. And Gates barbecue is really good sauce. It's like, it's not a sweet, smoky barbecue. Oh, well, it is a little smoky. It's like a smoky, zesty barbecue. It's not like one of the sweet barbecues, you know? Like the dark brown, thick ones. It's, uh, it's more of a zesty barbecue. 
And uh, I like all of our, I like the sweet barbecues. I like the, you know, whatever. It doesn't matter if it's hot and sweet, if it's more zesty and smoky like this. Whatever it may be. I like a bunch of different barbecues as long as it's good barbecue. And the skate stuff's good. I meant to pour a little on the plate. And as you can see, it just drowned. Because it's not thick. Look at that. It's like a liquid. See it moving around? It's not like that, like that McDonald's barbecue sauce that's like just thick in the cup. No, this stuff comes out quick, and I forgot about it. I don't know. It's just been a while since I've had Gates, I guess. And I went to dump a little out, and it just went all over the plate. So, the sauce is Gates mixed with whatever Frank's Red Hot was on the plate. So now I've got hot Gates barbecue sauce, and that's what I'm dipping the fish in. But I'm also trying to remember to have a couple bites without sauce, because the stuff is delicious just by itself. Ace, what up? While well, you sit there and eat, where's mine? Man... If you come up here quick, I'll save you this one piece, Ace. <laughs> I only kept six bluegills today. I kept like tw I, I caught like 26, 27 of them in a couple bass. But I only kept like six bluegills because one swallowed the hook towards the end of my live stream. I did a five-hour live stream this morning. You can check it out. Towards the end of that. And it was just... You probably don't want to check it out because Molly wasn't there. It was just me embarrassing myself, right? Um, but I caught... You know, plenty of bluegills, and towards the end, I wish I had been keeping them all along, because I'd have a lot more and some bigger ones. But towards the end, a fish walled the hook, so I was like, I'll keep a few. I'll keep like five or so. So I ended up keeping six, um, six decent sized male bluegills. They're still a little on the small on the small side for what I like to keep, um, but they're about seven, seven and a half inch fish. So I kept six of them, and I did, I stopped that live because I started getting poured on with the rain. But I came in here. And I, for, if you watch the beginning of this live, I'm filleting the fish, I'm cleaning them, I'm, I'm, you know, doing all that part. And then I did the whole process from the last live stream I caught them, this live stream I cleaned them, I breaded them, I fried them, and now I'm eating them. So, And I got two more pieces to go. Molly always tells me I eat slow. She would have had all this gone in five minutes. She doesn't eat a lot. She might have got full before she finished it, but she eats fast. But I'm going to finish all, I'm going to eat these other two pieces, I'm going to finish it. And then I'll talk for a few minutes, but I'm going to end the live stream and take a shower. Because I got poured on out there and I got my family coming over and I don't want to smell like, you know, a wet fishy dude. You know what I'm saying? But you guys see how I'm not rocking the hat I normally do. I normally rock the Sunfish King hat. Check this hat out. This is from my boy. Show Me Creeks. I thought the Sunfish King hoodie was enough today. But I got the Show Me Creeks hat. So if you guys want to see an awesome fisherman here in Missouri who fishes creeks and streams, and he also does some, you know, ponds and lakes and stuff like that as well, just type in Show Me Creeks in the search bar on YouTube and go check him out. And when you do, I know you're going to subscribe because he makes awesome videos. But when you do all that, let him know that Sunfish King sent you over there. He'll be very appreciative. He's a good dude. He just hit a 1,000. Sweet and spicy, my favorite. Yeah, it's good, man. Yeah, Ace, thank you for coming. I appreciate you. I got out the other day, got some crappie, but never got a bite from a cat. Oh, wow. What were you fishing with? Uh, were you fishing with crappie or for crappie and for catfish? Or did you just have minnows out there and you were seeing what you caught? Or how were you doing it? If you're, if you're fishing for food, I'd rather have crappie than catfish anyway. But if you're fishing for that bite and that thrill, obviously the catfish are going to put up a lot better fight. I just bit the inside of my lip. I bit the same spot on the inside of my lip like four times in the last couple days. <laughs> Missouri said, if I miss anyone that once shared out, say something. Yeah, Missouri, he's a new mod on the channel. And he just learned Friday night how to share links. And he's already a master. He can moderate with the best of them already. That's why I made him a mod. I knew I knew I could trust him. He's a good dude. Nah. Love the video you put out. Fish the two. Fish the two. Appreciate you coming in, Ace. Ace is a good dude. I've known you for a while, actually, Ace, right? Probably originally just from seeing you in other people's live chats and stuff like that. I used to go up on a panel with some people sometimes. It would always be late at night while I was winding down at the end of the night. But yeah, Ace is a good dude. If you guys don't have Ace, consider checking him out and picking him up.
You had your crappie rod and your catfish. Wait. Your cat rod and your crappie rod for bait. Gotcha. Ace, I'm still hook set to you. Love picking on you. <laughs> I appreciate it. I got a couple people that give me a bunch of crap, and I, I like it because I, I like when people can take crap and can give it back, you know? Sometimes I'm wary to just give crap to everybody who comes into my live streams because people are going to think I'm just being a dick, basically. But me and Off the Hook, we give each other crap all the time. Me and Mo Dog, me and Earl from Reef Robber, we always give each other crap. There's a tiny little wiener dog walking in the back there. Um, but yeah, certain people like you and Jesse Lopez are always giving me crap. And my girlfriend who doesn't know that we, we talk like that, she'll hear what some people say in the live streams or something or in the chats, and she'll be like, wow, why are they being so mean to you? I'm like, it's fine, trust me. Whatever it is, I probably deserve it. <laughs> So did you end up keeping any of them crappie ace or were you just throwing them back? I don't think I have missed any of your lives. You've been coming in for a lot of lives for the past few days with me and off the hook and everything. Sarcasm is the pain family love, love language. <laughs> yeah, you should hear my family when we all get together. It's wild. Molly's just, her family's more quiet. And so she comes in and she hears us all yelling and talking crap on each other and getting all riled up, and she's just like, I don't, she just gets quiet, she doesn't know what to do. I'm waiting for the day that she, that she says something to Aiden, that's my brother, or something like that, and just roasts him. It'll be so funny. You kept 16, oh yeah. All right, my woman is due home, catch y'all again. All right, later Chris, I'm about to wrap it up here anyway, I got... That little piece of crappie. Look how good it turned out, though. Oh, so good. It's not even, like, spicy. It's just, like, there's so much going on. Because I got a ton of uh, Tonys on there. And it's already it's already southern seasoned. Then I got the barbecue and the hot sauce on there. It's just, like, a lot going on in my tongue. But you guys want to see me absolutely die? Just wait. Sometime in the next week or so, I'm going to go live doing a content creator talk, and we're going to have people on panel. I've got people who have been asking me a lot of questions lately. They think because I'm monetized and i got 1,500 subscribers that, that I'm some expert. I'm like, no, I'm just having fun on YouTube. I know I know some things, and I don't know some things. But i got a lot of people asking me questions lately, so what I want to do is I want to have a live stream where we can have people come on panel. They can share advice, like do this, don't do this, this worked for me, I wouldn't recommend this, things like that, and then people can ask questions. And I think it'll help a lot of people, but we're going to add a twist. Uh, Fishing with Modog, he sent me the Death Nut, the, these all sound terrible, the Death Nut, the World's Hottest Gummy Bear, and the Satan's Toe, which are like super hot challenges or whatever. And I did the one chip challenge, and I covered it in ghost pepper sauce, and it was hot. And people say the Death Nut's pretty bad. People say that the World's Hottest Gummy Bear is really, really bad. I'm going to try that one first. But I'm going to try to eat that world's hottest gummy bear. I'm going to wait till I hit like 50 likes on the stream or something. When that happens, after, after a couple hours, I'm going to eat that world's hottest gummy bear while I'm trying to keep a straight face and talking to people about advice for their channel and ask questions and stuff. Have you ever seen Hot Ones where, uh, I forget his name, but Bald Dude, he interviews famous people like musicians and actors and stuff like that. And they all talk about whatever. He, he's a pretty good interviewer. But they eat hot wings while they're doing it and they get hotter and hotter until you get to one called like the bomb and it's like millions of scovels and it's super hot and everyone's like oh my god it's so hot but they try to answer the questions while he's just grilling them and asking them questions and they're eating the hot uh, wings and so it's going to be kind of like that where I try to maintain my composure and try to answer people's questions while I'm just absolutely roasting on the inside and that's what people say that the the world's hottest gummy bear they say it's, it's really really hot don't get me wrong they say the worst part is you swallow it. It's literally this big, so it looks so innocent. But they say that it just liquefies your inside. It just melts your insides. And so I guess I shouldn't do it at night when I work the next day. So I'm not just on the toilet crying the entire day the next day. But that's probably what's going to happen. Okay, I got to go. I hope to see you all on my lives this weekend. All right, Ted, I'm excited, man. Hopefully you can get uh, 
get the kids out there on some smallmouth or something. And if you do get those micro light rods before then, hopefully you can find some crappie and some perch and stuff like that. That'll be really cool to watch. I know the kids will have a ton of fun. Later. So when is the wedding? She seems like a keeper, bud. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the plan eventually. We're both in school right now, man, so you'll see it you'll see it eventually. You'll see it all happen eventually, but you're gonna see a lot more of her on the channel because we've actually only been dating for a year uh a year and a month, just over that. So just over thirteen months. That's all we've been dating. So it's not a huge rush to move to any next steps or anything. But I've known her for three years, and she's awesome. But when she first, when we were first dating for the first many months, she didn't really want to be in the videos or the live streams, you know. So a lot of, a lot of people are like that in general, but especially women, they don't want to be, I don't know, embarrassed or something, whatever. I don't know what it is. But she's really sweet. She outfishes me, as you guys all see. So she's, she's now is completely fine with being on the videos and everything. So you'll see a lot more of her. But. We live two and a half hours away from each other, so she graduates this this December with her bachelor's in ecological horticulture, which is like gardening and ecology and, you know, it's an agricultural type thing. I graduate either next May or next August, depending on how my research goes, with my master's degree in wildlife biology. So once we're both graduated and I can move, so I'm not two and a half hours away from her, you know, let's wait till we live together and decide if we hate each other or not after living together for a couple months. And then you never know. You never know what might happen. I might just have to tie my shoe in a live stream and then all of a sudden I'm pulling a box out of my pocket. <laughs> but let's not get ahead of ourselves just yet. Aiden is too roastable. That's my brother. That's so funny. Nothing over a pound. That's the thing. Last year I caught some really nice uh, crappies. And I caught some really nice crappies this year at a different lake in town, and it's a private lake, and I do sneak in there when I can, uh, or I just get someone who lives there to take me. But from this lake here, I got some nice ones last year. This year, I didn't catch a single one over a pound. I caught one nice one that was probably 13 inches, but it was it was skinnier than normal. Like, he wasn't eating good. I still ate him. I'm not ashamed. I still ate him. But yeah, this lake, I mean, I've caught some definitely over a pound at the other lake, but I haven't caught a single one over a pound at this lake as far as crappie. Now, I did catch a one-pound shell crack, like a red ear sunfish shell cracker the other day, and it did swallow the hook, I think. It either swallowed the hook or I just thought I was going to eat it, because I remember I ate that thing. But put it in some tacos. Corinne, hey, yo, can I do my laundry? Yeah, come out here and do your laundry. <laughs> I'm about to end the live stream anyway. Thanks for asking, though. She said, can I do my laundry? <laughs> I ain't stopping you. Just don't come out here dropping F-bombs. Oh, gosh. Clean my plate, so that's about it. Anybody have any questions or anything? We're about an hour and 45 minutes into this thing. I'm probably going to shut down in a couple minutes and go take a shower. That's the way they are here, paper thin. Really, some of them were nice and chunky, but that big one, I caught a big dinner plate, black crappie, big fat one. I mean, not fat. I mean, it was just big, but it was skinny. <laughs> it would be like a, one that you would think is a big fat one by looking at it, but then you turn it sideways and you can't see it anymore. It disappears. It's like literally like a, a pancake, man. But it still ate good. Still delicious. I kept, I don't know, I had a day where I kept like 60. I had a day where I kept like 83 or something like that. These are from these private lakes where you can keep as many as you want. And I'm not trying to destroy the population. I just know that almost nobody keeps them especially from this lake here and so they're getting kind of stunned that's why there's a bunch of tiny ones so i kept what i could and then i had some days where i caught a bunch and i didn't keep any so i don't think one guy's gonna hurt that crappie population i think that's actually the problem with a lot of places is i think a lot of states don't really fully realize how how what's the word i'm looking for how prolific of reproducers crappie are because if you put crappie in a little pond and you don't have anyone taking them out, there'll be nothing but tiny crappie in that pond in just a couple years. They reproduce like crazy. So, let's see. Cool. Well, I think I think I need to get cleaned up. I got fish guts in a bucket. I got a dirty 
uh, two dirty knives and uh, a dirty uh, cutting board. I got cooking stuff everywhere, and I got to somehow take a shower before my family gets here. Later, Ted. That's like way too many and no food for them. Yeah, that's why there's little tiny ones. That's why I like to take some of the take some of it. I'll even keep some of the tiny ones. Missouri doesn't have a uh, unless it's a specific law for a specific lake. Um, they don't have a, a length. Like it doesn't have to be nine inches or ten inches for you to keep. You can keep, however, up to thirty um, in most lakes. Some lakes are fifteen. Some are catch and release only, which I don't think is a good idea for crappie. Um, but these private lakes here, they're not stocked by the state. The fish aren't owned by the state. They're owned by the neighborhoods. And so there's two private lakes in town that I fish for crappie. This one I can because my parents live here. The other one I can only legally fish it when I'm with somebody else that actually lives there, which I do know people who live there and I go with them. But I did find out that gate code and I do sneak in with my kayak sometimes. <laughs> but in both, in that one, I don't think... If I made the goal to take all the crappie out of that other fish, just with a line and a rod, I could go, I could, or take all the crappie out of that lake. If I went to that other lake in town every single day and kept as many crappies as I could, I couldn't even dent that population. Not that I try or anything like that. I only fish there a couple times a year. And I'll throw back the small ones when I'm there because the average size is bigger. I just don't understand. It's such a healthy population. There's so many crappie in that lake where I caught... I don't know, 150 one day, and I kept like 80 of them. But the average size is still big. The average size is still 10, 11 inches. I don't understand. There's more big ones than small ones. So I don't understand how that's even possible at that place. You know, it's just a really healthy population. Dad will probably be here around 5. And Zach said 5.30. What time is it now? All right, it's 4.15. I'm going to end this thing because I got I to gotta get cleaned up. I got to throw those guts out there, and I got to take a shower. So... Later, Mark. Listen, Ace, Mark, Cat, um, in, uh, Chris, I think, already left. But anyone else who was in here, Randy, anybody else, I really appreciate you guys hanging out. Thanks for hanging out with a uh, dude who's just been catching tiny little dink fish all day. I appreciate that. And, uh, yeah, watching me cook them up and getting hungry. <laughs> yep, till the next one. I'll read one last chat from Ace, and then I'll head out. The lake here in town is getting bad. The bass are small. Used to be 10-pound bass. Now you're lucky to get a 3-pounder. Yeah, what you need to do is you need to either go out and keep your limit of, of bass. I wouldn't keep any of those big 3-pounders, but you know, keep some of the smallest that you're allowed to keep. Um, and if you don't eat bass, I don't know what to tell you because you're probably not allowed to throw them somewhere else. And I hate to throw bass in the bank and let them die. Or they just need to get the, the conservation department or someone to go out there, shock it, Take a bunch of bass out and then go put them somewhere else. Because it sounds like they're getting stunned and there's too many bass. That's how my sister's pond was. And there's just a bunch of tiny bass. And so I went there and I kept a bunch of bass and I ate them. And bass aren't the best, but I, you know, I fried them up and I made them good and they were okay. So I fried them up and ate them and you know, now there's it's a better population now that there's not so many tiny bass. Um, the thing that I don't like is it makes it hard because... A lot of people don't keep bass anyway, and so that's that's good until they get overpopulated, then it becomes a problem. But I don't like the way it is where in Missouri, you can only keep bass if they're 15 inches or higher. Now 15 inches, that's a two pound plus bass. If I wanted to keep bass to control a population, I'd be keeping those in the one pound range. I would not be out there keeping bass that are two, three pounds, because those are going to be the big breeders, especially in Missouri, you're lucky to get a four or five pound bass most places in Missouri. Um, we don't, we don't, we're not known for our giant bass. So I think they need to lower that, you know. I think it should be a slot. I think you should be able to keep bass between 11 and 16 inches or something like that. Because if you get into 18, 20 inch bass, you don't want people keeping those. You want people letting them go. And people are allowed to keep, I think, six largemouth bass a day. Now, I don't keep bass almost ever. I don't know if you guys have ever seen me keep a bass on my channel and eat it. I don't really do that very often. Uh, if I do, it's like a private pond that I'm trying to control the population because they're not as good as bluegill or crappie or catfish or any of that. And there's all this like, oh, you shouldn't keep bass, you shouldn't keep bass. You know, people get upset and they'll unsubscribe and all this stuff, which honestly do I care, but it is what it is. Um, but yeah, that's my thing is why make it so you can only keep bass that are starting to get to that big trophy size? Like, There's something wrong with the legislation, but that's the way it is. You've been tossing them over the dam. Well, there you go. A1 Fishing Family, I'm back for a minute. Had to sneak back on my phone. I'm at work. New Jersey's in the house. What's up? You can keep three 
over 14 inches. Okay. Well, I appreciate you guys coming in. I actually, I know you guys just joined, and I don't have any fish to show you anymore because I ate them all. But if you want to go back and watch any of the live stream, feel free. So the five-hour live stream earlier, I caught, I don't know, 27 fish. 26 of them were bluegills. One was a bass. I caught the nicest bass of the day before I started the live stream, of course. I even caught a freaking big turtle in that live stream. But you can go watch the catching process. You can come and watch this live stream that's going to be just under two hours. And you can watch me fillet them and explain how I do it. Not that I'm an expert or anything, but you can see me explain the way I do it. It's fast. It's easy. Um, you can watch my entire process of breading the fish, frying them, and eating them, which I just did. They're gone now. But I ate six bluegills, and then I was hanging out with people and chatting, and it was fun. But I am going to wrap this thing up, actually, because I'm got i still wet. I got literally poured on out there in between the last live stream and this live stream. And I already smelled like fish before that, and I probably got blood on me, and I'm a whole mess. My dad's going to be home uh, here in a little bit. My sister and her husband are coming over. So we're going to have the whole family here. And I live two and a half hours away. I don't get to see my family all the time. I try to come up here as much as I can. But I'm going to hang out with the family tonight. It's going to be fun. So I do need to go take a shower, but I also need to clean this entire kitchen because there's stuff everywhere for me. Cutting these fish and um, got the guts in a bucket and got the cooking stuff everywhere. So I'm going to wrap this thing up and head out. But I do appreciate everyone for stopping by. Bernadette Polanowski. That's Ted's mom. Hi, enjoying this chat very much. That is Ted from Off the Hook Outdoors, mom. I appreciate you coming in. Thank you very much. It's uh, it's good to get to know you through the chat, but I wish I could have been up there. I think you're going to, are you going to be up there with Ted um, and his family this weekend or not? Either way, it would have been nice to meet you uh, in person and the rest of the family and stuff like that. But Ted and Sue and the kids are awesome, and I'm sure the rest of you guys are awesome as well. So maybe one day, because me and Ted are pretty good friends, and we're going to try to get together as much as we can for two guys that are 14 hours apart. So maybe one day I'll meet you in person. Yeah, that'll be awesome. So uh, I'll be watching his live streams and you know, maybe he'll do a live stream from the house and we'll get to see some of the family, maybe not. But thank you so much for coming in. Everybody, I appreciate you. I'm gonna go ahead and end this thing, get clean and hang out with some family because family comes first for me. You guys probably know that by now on my channel. Someday I'll be blue. <laughs> All right, y'all. Oh, you're talking about a moderator. I got you, Ace. Someday, maybe sooner than you think. All right, y'all, I'm going to go ahead and end this thing. I appreciate you guys. Fishing's good, and I'll catch you on the next one, whatever that may be. Thank you, and have a blessed day, everybody. Later.